Ah, oh, why why is this so bright? What? Is it is this daylight? What? I haven't seen the sun in years. This is this is also brand new to me. I I have to escape this. I have to get back to the cave. The cave of darkness and sanctuary. I have to get back to Fighting Garlic Kid. Or Garlic Bread. I can't remember what I nicknamed him. It's been about like five days since I recorded my last episode. But uh I do remember we had to we lost against him and had to train to become Hokage. Just so that we could um we could beat this. Something I still don't understand, sorry to jump off topic, is why we have to use the PST to understand him. Uh and stuff. Like, I'm sure he's just some kid dressed up in a suit. Like, it's probably like a bag over his head and like a cape, I don't know, and something green. Cause first of all, I checked out the Tandor Pokedex because I wanted to like look at typings that I was gonna be facing up against in the soon and whatnot. And for example, like Luna Pup's a ground fighting type and stuff. So, you know, we'll be, like, not unawares and stuff. Because, for example, I don't remember if y'all, or I don't know if y'all remember this. It's been a minute. But, um, there's, like, this purple snake-looking thing. Like, it almost looks like a fleshlight, almost, that we fight in the grass. Uh, I think it's on the route to the right of, uh, this city and stuff. It's, like, poison-type, and I thought it was, like, a grass bug or something. And so, I should have just guessed by t uh, color and stuff, but I didn't. So, we've taken a gander at the old Pokedex to make sure that... Fuck, he's faster than us. The hell? How, can we, how did he become faster than us? I wasn't paying attention, unfortunately. Let's see. Oh, also, another big sh uh, thing that happened that's different from the last episode is we ended up dropping Shiny Squirrel. Shiny Squirrel's evolution, I saw what it looked like, Shiny... I'll probably put a picture of it up right here or something. I wasn't impressed with it, as well as whenever I was looking at its moves. I also wasn't impressed with the way it progresses, and we already have two electric types, so I wanted something something else. So I decided to like just capture the first Pokemon that I saw uh, in the grass, and I ended up getting Bad Dude right here. Um, and so that's what we ended up doing, was we picked him up. and. If you can tell, I did a very, very, in my point of view, spicy pun for his name. I named him Bad Dude. Because, you know, he's a sheep. So, I think we have not only type advantage, but as well move advantage. I don't think he'll be able to do anything to us that'll bring us under half health. Because he's got ground moves and fighting moves um, and stuff. So we should be in, like, perfect condition here to win. Uh, because of the fact that he's asleep and his type advantage is in our favor. Yep, let's see. I would have thought that, you know, ground would have uh, nullified the fighting disadvantage. Alrighty, so he's about to send out me in. I think that's the um, poison bat, so we're going to change to... Um, bomb, just because, you know, we tried to play a little bit risque by putting out Tiptoe and Jays, in truth. He's not our best option as a Pokemon, sorry, I almost burped and so, yep. Um, and, uh, you know, he's not really our best choice, A, because he's slow, and B, because the other Pokemon had a type advantage. Um and stuff. I just, I saw that we had the first hit, and so I assumed that we could get the second hit as well. I didn't see, but he might have put a, a status effect move on us with, um, his earth, or not a status effect move, but a status effect with his move that dropped down our speed. Okie doke. We're making pretty good progress. Now, originally I wanted to make sure every Pokemon was at level 20. But then I realized that his strongest Pokemon was 20, so we would just end up, um, what's it called? Just like, uh, what's it called? We would just end up like, okay, 
O-H-K-O-ing him. That's one hit knockout. Just because if all of our Pokemon are stronger than his, then it wouldn't be a close fight. And I know that whenever I watch like anime or just anything in general, if I see like a one-sided fight and it's not like the antagonist of that arc or the antagonist of that show, like, um, what's it called? Beating, um, the person and whatnot, then it's not enjoyable for me to watch because, like, if the protagonist is just whooping ass, uh, and stuff, then it doesn't really matter because it's just like, okay, great, well, uh, kind of like One Punch Man. One Punch Man, ugh, One Punch Man does a very good job of, like, even though he's going to win every single time, he they make it look exciting for you, which doesn't happen in most scenarios where the protagonist, if the protagonist is overpowered, just one-shots. And so I didn't want that to be the case. So instead, what I did was... Oh, man, I wasn't even paying attention to the screen. Look at this fucking sheep dab! Look at my dab! Look at my dab! Bitch, dab! Alright, besides that, um, what's it called? Yeah, I didn't think it was going to look exciting if I just, like, insta-killed everything. So instead, I made sure to get all of our Pokemon to a relatively, like okay level to fight him and see right now we aren't even having to really worry about him so if I brought them up even higher it just wouldn't have been like a fun fight uh, and stuff this right here luckily I just took advantage of type advantage I took advantage of the type disadvantage that he had and ended up uh, winning this solely due to the fact that he's not another person he's an NPC so he's just going off of what the coding tells him to use moves on and luckily, we'll always have the advantage due to typing uh, in the end. Okay. Oh, I accidentally clicked the thing, the um, the exposition of the story. So, we'll start here then. They're, they're your friends? That's impossible. Pokemon and humans can't coexist. Dang, all three of them came out. Look at that dab and sheep leave. Comrades, you're going back to that place? Why? Grr, you'll pay for this, human. So long as there are Pokemon that are being held against their will, I, Garlic Kid, the Pokemon hero, will be there to save them. I'll be back. He went through the front door? Why couldn't I have just stopped him right there and just been like, nay? You will not progress. Okay. Let's leave. Oh. Look. Everybody's here to meet us. Sorry for skipping the, uh, the first part of his story. I, I just did it on autopilot right there because I was talking. So, um, if he ended up saying something important, you know, whoops, my bad. Let's see. Who's talking? It's the dude. Screw. Er. <clears throat> Scoot, you did it. We managed to recover all the missing Pokemon thanks to you. We followed behind uh, you in case you needed backup. But you did great. We saw everything that happened. I kind of gave him a Soldier 76 voice, but uh, I don't remember if that was his voice. I remember Garlic Bread's voice was nerdy. His was a deep voice. I know Bambo's voice because it's a voice I used to make fun of one of my friends. And I know that the girl's voice is kind of like a Midwestern voice. Did any of uh, you see that tiny green man in a costume run by just now? That wasn't a man. Or, that wasn't a man. That was a Pokemon. Our thief was actually a Pokemon called Garlic Kid. I'm going to call bullshit on this because I definitely looked through the Pokedex. And there is no fucking Garlic Kid. Because I remembered thinking, God, there's a lot of freaking... Uh, legendaries looking, legendary looking Pokemon in this and stuff. And I definitely didn't see a Garlic Kid. So unless they didn't update the sprite for it and they changed its name to something else, that is not a Pokemon in this game. They're incredibly rare. I haven't heard of one being sighted in many years. Its habitat is in a remote spot in the mountains, so it doesn't encounter humans often. I've got you in my sights. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that one had never encountered people before. Garlic kids have a strong sense of justice, like I do, 
for young punts, young punks on my lawn. Kind of messed up that joke, sorry. We must have seen the Pokemon in the lab and thought we were keeping them prisoner. I suppose they attacked because they were just excited. Perhaps Scarlet Kid has a point, though. From now on, we'll make sure our Pokemon have more freedom. And we'll listen to them more closely. You weren't in the cave. You know nothing of what happened. Speaking of, as a field test for the Pokemon speech translator, I'd say that was a resounding success. I can see it becoming very useful, too, for getting young punks off my lawn in the hands of Pokemon trainer. So as thanks for all that you've done for us, why don't you keep the prototype PST? This is bound to give us some great field data. Just be more careful with it, all right? We wouldn't want it to fall in the wrong hands. God, he has a lot of speaking. Why isn't anybody else getting speaking? If you need anything, we'll be back at the lab. Getting some hot slizz from Professor Cypress over here. Just gonna spread them rosy cheeks of hers and just get one planted right on her as I slap her on the desk. Until next time. Damn. Bambo and fucking Cypress didn't even say a shit thing. Fucking the other freaking professor who didn't even have a name got to say everything. Scoots, if this were a test, I'd say you passed the flying colors. You showed great intuition and resourcefulness. I'd say you're well on your way to becoming a full-fledged trainer, mate. Good night, mate. Oh yeah, before I forgot, I have an item here that will help you on your journey. Obtained EXP share. Thank Christ. So. Allow one of your Pokemon to hold the EXP share and it will gain experience, even when it doesn't participate in a battle. Keep patching Pokemon and growing stronger. Your next gym badge is in... Beal Beach City. Right? That's a long trek, so you'd better stock up before your journey. Happy travels. I'm rooting for you. Now... I gotta get home to Moki Town. Let's fly, PJ. If I remember PJ, PJ's like three feet tall. So there's no way he just got on that thing. He like put one toe on it and just flew. Okay, so with this here, we uh, we did some very successful story. We beat Garlic Kid. We met Soldier Seven or Professor Soldier Seventy Six. We got. Uh, EXP share which is amazing because now if we find a good Pokemon uh, we can give it to it If even if it's a lower level like if we find a Comite we can give it to it and even if it's a lower level we won't have to send it out and then swap back in and stuff because that's really annoying so this is awesome and uh, I think this is where we're going to end the episode be sure to like and comment if you do like uh, this and want to see more and I'll see you guys in the next episode alright peace